The 10 years of bloody and gruesome civil war officially ended in 2002. It left 75,000 people dead and 20,000 physically challenged. and thousands of lost child soldiers. It was declared the poorest country in the world. Sierra Leone has a population of nearly 6 million. 70% live below the poverty line, 62% live in rural areas and barely survive on virtually nothing. The population is divided between Muslim and Christians. The official languages are English and Creole. Today, the capital Freetown still has no electricity. The rich have generators. Poor make do with small kerosene lamps for lighting. This is the grim scenario of the country Idris and More came from when they arrived in the Barefoot College in June 2004. They belong to a small indigenous organization called Safer Future sponsored by the Austrians. To learn all about solar electrification, they stayed for six months and left in October 2004. Together, they solar electrified 10 houses in a village and set up a workshop to train youth on solar energy. In September 2006, the Barefoot College responded with a visit to Safer Future. The idea was to jointly select the first two remote rural villages ever to be solar electrified in the country. But to make it even more unique, train illiterate rural women to solar electrify their own village. Women have to walk six miles and pay five dollars to get one gallon of kerosene from the nearest town of Waterloo. That has to last them one month. A democratic transparent process that had never been seen in the country was followed when the two villages, Kontaline, 48 houses, and Moin Mibana, 19 houses, predominantly Muslim, were selected. All the families in these two villages had to participate in taking two major decisions. How much were they prepared to pay for the use of the solar units consisting of two lights and one solar lantern? After an open debate in the presence of their religious leaders, they agreed in writing to pay $2 per month. Who would go for training to India to be a solar engineer? They had to select two women. The women had to be rooted in their village and had to be illiterate. This was beyond everybody's comprehension. Finally, they chose Nancy and Fatu, both typical women in their late 40s, one already a grandmother, Poor, illiterate, owning some land, having large families, earning their living selling palm oil and agricultural produce. Within two months of their selection, they arrived in India in January 2007. They had never been to school, never been to the capital of their country, never flown in a plane and never gone so far away from home. It required extraordinary courage. Coming to a strange land, wearing strange clothes, eating strange food. Meeting, staying and working with women from different countries like Bolivia, Cameroon, Afghanistan, Mali and no one understanding their language Creole. These pressures are enough to make anyone run away. On top of that, learning about electronics and fabricating complicated solar energy parts, identifying components without the written word, only from their color, and learning only with their hands about soldering and installation, and establishing a rural electronic workshop to repair and maintain units in their village. Incredibly, that is what they accomplished in six months. When they returned in July 2007 with no paper certificates, they knew more about solar installation than solar engineers who had gone through five years of any university in Sierra Leone. Before they left India in July, they packed each and every part. When the consignment arrived in November 2007, in their village, 
they unpacked it within days established the rural electronic workshop and within 2 weeks they solar electrified each house in both villages it was a miracle that made people in their village look at these very ordinary women with awe In December 2007 in the presence of highest officials in government politicians and local leaders the first two remote villages ever to be solar electrified by two illiterate rural women were inaugurated Got a line suffer a loss during the war one of the village we really didn't suffer but thank God today we did celebrate a good project So on behalf of His Excellency the President the government and people of Sierra Leone let me thank you for this very noble venture and to say that we are happy that it has been introduced here and we look forward to its development So now the village people and get for Sidom na ne let me say na me for go So right now how me they feel now i they feel good of myself because we tin do i don't go school but i don't learn how to be say now how to be say i they i they benefit say say go to me fitin the word on born na say me no go school i born ka say say no problem electric no go school so i want suppose you no go school na they go india they go learn and say no problem me self agree with the community there the community self they self they happy I go India. So right now we don't face the system here so. We don't improve the roads they all we don't install the roads them. But right now but cool people then they be we for them thing here so they say they want them to let them improve. In a very quiet and gentle way by setting an example they sent a powerful message throughout the country. That is in the hands of women anything is possible.